Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. I'm a gun owner. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. You know, I don't think that guns are scary things. Visit us online at www.guntalk.com. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN, 866-825-5486. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, back to gun talk. And we're back with you, Tom Gresham, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. Don't forget that uh, we have the giveaway going. We're going to give away a Trijicon ACOG, one of the great optics. Put that thing on top of your AR, rock and roll. Uh, this is uh, actually the 35 by 55 ACOG. All you have to do to enter for a chance to win is go to guntalk.com slash win. Somebody at the end of the month is going to win this thing. Pretty neat. Uh, all right, 866-TALK-GUN is our number here. we got several things going on. We're talking about the open carry guys in Texas. Are they screwed it up for the rest of us? Also, I've got a petition. I just, on a lark, decided to throw up on change.org asking the Target department stores to simply, well, to welcome lawful gun owners. The Bloomberg-backed Moms Demand Action Group is asking Target to issue a statement asking people to leave their guns at home the way that they did with Chipotle and Starbucks. And I don't know, let's see if we can get some uh, some traction on this thing. If you are truly a Truth Squad person, if you are of the no shrug persuasion, if you are willing to step up and l- sign your name to something because you believe in something, go to this website, change.org, and then search for me, Tom Gresham. The, uh, the petition is welcome as target, welcome lawful gun owners, and sign it. Let's get some more names on this thing. All right, you uh, have concealed carry permit. You carry sometimes, maybe like a lot of us, you carry all the time. You are concerned with what happens to you if you have to use your gun in some form. What are the legal ramifications? What do you do? Do you need insurance? Do you need protection? What do you do? Well, uh, there are companies kind of popping up to take care of this because there's so many of us now. More than 10 million people have concealed carry permits. So we've we've asked Kirk Evans, he's the president of Texas Law Shield, to join us to talk about this. Kirk, welcome to Gun Talk. Oh, thanks, Tom. Appreciate the uh, invite. Absolutely. So your outfit is Texas Law Shield. How did that come about, and when was that? Texas Law Shield was started about six years ago by a group of Houston lawyers that were gun enthusiasts, but uh, got tired of seeing just time and time again folks who had lawfully used their weapon getting caught up in the legal system just because there was a gun involved. And when you say use, I notice on your website you make it specific that use doesn't mean pull the trigger all the time. That's correct. Uh, Use of a firearm can be as simple as, you know, pulling back your jacket saying, hey, back off, I've got a gun, Uh, pulling it out or even pulling the trigger. All of those are covered under our program. What were you seeing? What was happening to people? And I, I'm still happening to people if they use a gun in self-defense, sometimes maybe just pull it out and the bad guy runs away. Can they get in legal trouble for that? Yes, there are several reasons that the good guy gets in trouble. Uh, number one, uh, almost universally, the bad guy does not tell the truth. Um, we saw time and time again the you know, road rage incident, something at a gas station, convenience store. Good guy displays his weapon, bad guy runs away, calls the police, and tells the story about the crazy guy with the gun. Right. And police, police show up, and they've got the skewed story. They see the guy with the gun, and uh, next thing you know, they're in the legal system. They've got to get a lawyer. Yeah, it kind of goes to my point. I always tell people, if you get into any situation, even if you don't think anybody else has seen it, you need to be the first one to call 911, because the first person in gets to establish what the scenario is. That's absolutely correct, and we recommend that uh, if you use your weapon, you call, because after all, you've been the victim of a crime. You were assaulted or somebody attempted to rob you, um, so you certainly want to report that incident to the police and be the first person to call. Exactly. Now, otherwise, somebody else calls, as you say, and this happens all the time. I hear it all around the country. Somebody, the bad guy calls in, and the thing is, you know, and you know this as being a lawyer, the bad guys, they actually understand the system because they live in the system. Most of us who are not lawyers or not bad guys, we rarely come in contact with the criminal justice system. So we're babes in the woods. 
No, that is exactly the case. And in fact, uh, we see that all the time, even with our members and even with, uh, you know, the increased prevalence of guns and education on guns. These, uh, you know, the folks in our program are on the good guy side. They are not, you know, they don't know how to lie to the police. They don't know how to, you know, set up a scenario to benefit them. They just, you know, they think they're doing the right thing by, you know, telling the truth and uh, trying to explain their side of the story. And that one of the things that you do, I was looking at, uh, you actually have education for your members on uh, different aspects of the legal system and about concealed carry. That is correct. In every state that we operate, we have a state-specific guide to the use of force. And it basically takes that long, boring code that everybody, when they're sitting through their CHL or concealed carry permit class or signing up for it, everybody that read that long, boring code, We took all that and distilled it down to 20 to 24 page illustrated book that just explains when you can and cannot use deadly force in your state. Uh, And that's just one of our publications. We have another one on search and seizure. What, you know, what are, what are your rights and obligations if you have a gun in your car when, you know, the cop pulls you over for a a broken taillight? What do you do? What can they do? How do you respond to that? Um, and then we also do seminars. We have member seminars, um, where the lawyers come and talk, and you can speak with the lawyers, ask as many questions as you want, and get educated on firearms law. And, and obviously, the the baseline, the the core of your business is a uh, an emergency hotline where people can get direct access with their members to an attorney if they uh, are in a situation like this and can get legal help. Right. That is correct. Twenty four hour uh, a day hotline that is always carried and always answered by a lawyer. It's not a receptionist, it's not a call service or a call back. When you call, if you pull your, your gun out, the bad guy runs away, you can call and talk to your lawyer that second. The second the gun comes out, then the lawyer can walk you step by step through the uh, dealing with the police and dealing with the situation. Have you, uh, have you already had some folks uh, who are members uh, have to use the service? Oh, absolutely. We're in the, uh, I would say we're in the hundreds, if not uh, probably in excess of a thousand incidents that we've had. We're we are closing in on probably, I'd say, about a call a day on the emergency line. Uh, just We're up to nearly 100,000 members um, across the country. Obviously, when we started out, the calls were not you know nearly as frequent, but no, we are... Uh, we are now, unfortunately, getting a whole bunch of calls. Well, now, but, but your business is called Texas Law Shield, but you say that you're, you've got people all over the country. What's the story? Oh, that, uh, we actually operate in other states as U.S. Law Shield. We're in, ah. uh, yes, we're in Pennsylvania, Colorado, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, and Florida right now, and okay. expanding, expanding hopefully to all 50 within a year or two. What kind of legal services can somebody expect to get if they, if they need your help? Um, well, there's two aspects of it. One is the actual incident itself. So they call the emergency line. Um, they can have, you know, instant consultation. And then if they're charged with a crime, um, they get a lawyer from start to finish on the criminal side. And if the bad guy sues them, files a civil suit against them, they get uh, 100% coverage and all their legal bills paid from start to finish. So that's one side of it. The other side is we have... Um, lawyers to answer basically any firearms question that our members have. So, uh, you know, summertime starting, I'm going from uh, Florida to uh, Washington State, and I want to know what to do, what do I do with my gun through, you know, these 13 mm. states I'm going with. Right. The members are free to call at any time, and our lawyers will walk them through uh, those types of questions, just day-to-day questions. What's it cost? Uh, the basic program is $10.95 a month. Um uh, there's certainly, you can add on uh, multi-state coverage. We have minor children options, and there's a discount if you sign up uh, as a couple with your spouse. Fascinating. Well, as we have, and I, the number I keep hearing is we have more than 10 million people uh, licensed to carry now. And, of course, in several states, you don't have to have a permit to carry concealed at all. Uh, this has got to be an area where we just got a lot of people concerned with this. Uh, cert- certainly here in Texas and certainly the states where we're operating. Um, you know, I, I don't know about uh, the far west and the far east yet, but uh, certainly in our neck of the woods it is. All right, people, if people want to know more about uh, your operation, what's the best place to go? Sure. Uh, the website is texaslawshield.com or uslawshield.com if you're one of the, in one of the states where we operate. Sounds good. Well, listen, uh, Kirk, I appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for the, the help and the education. Keep helping people out, man. 
Oh, very much appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Excellent. All righty. Appreciate that. And, you know, it's interesting. People say, well, what do I do? Well, and, you know, I've talked to different groups, uh, you know, and I participate in one and it's a different one, but I think it's probably a good idea to have some kind of policy, some kind of program that you participate in. You certainly need to have a lawyer or your lawyer's phone number in your phone all the time, somebody you call. And the other thing is, the takeaway on this is, if you get assaulted and you drive away the bad guy with a gun, whether you shoot or not, you have to be the first one to call 911. Always remember that one. That's your next step. Get to safety, call 911, report it. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN. We're open lines. Give me a holler. One machine, one operator. Each machine is run by a single pair of hands. Hands that spend all day, every day, learning the machine inside and out. We don't believe in quotas. The point is crafting faultless ammunition, no matter how long that takes. It's not quick or easy. Being the best never is. Black Hills Ammunition. It started with our hands. In my world, there are no helpless victims. There is no weaker sex. In my world, pain comes from fear, and fear is not an option. But my world is just like yours. Only difference, how I choose to defend myself. Introducing the Carry On series from Taurus, the ultimate collection of concealed carry firearms designed for discreet, reliable personal protection. Visit TaurusUSA.com to learn more. Carry On. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. The Ruger American Rifle is a 100% American-made firearm that offers outstanding performance at a great price. Available in standard size and compact models, it features power bedding integral bedding blocks, a Ruger Marksman adjustable trigger, a flush fit four-round rotary magazine, and a three-lug bolt with 70-degree throw. Compact models feature a shorter length of pull and a shorter barrel for a reduction in overall length of more than five inches. The Ruger American Rifle, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. You may be a new shooter, a longtime gun owner, or even a police officer or soldier. No personal defense handgun is fully equipped without a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our new laser training video, The Laser's Edge, Crimson Trace. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. All right, we're talking about the uh, the open carry in Texas, and we're joined right now by the president of Open Carry Texas, C.J. Grisham. Hi, C.J., I appreciate you reaching out to us. Hey, thanks, Tom. I appreciate the opportunity to tell kind of our side of the story. Yeah, you know, and I kind of have been picking up that there's like, there's more than one branch of this thing going on. Can you, and you and I, you've been on the show here before, we've talked, uh, and I'm looking at what I'm seeing in the news reports, and obviously these are news reports. Are these guys that are doing this, are they part, are they part of Open Carry Texas, or is this, are they separate or something going else going on here? What's happening there? 
Well, there are four separate organizations here in Texas that are geared towards open carry. We're, we're obviously, Open Carry Texas is the largest. The problem that we're having right now is that a lot of these controversies that you see aren't even new controversies. What's happening is these gun control extremists and Moms Demand Action are going through our photo archives and picking out photos of things that have happened literally six months ago, as evidenced by the current Target problem. Mm -hmm. We haven't been in Target since January, and what happened was after we went into Target, we had a conversation with the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission, and we were basically told not that we can't go in there, but that we're threatening their uh, alcohol license because Target does sell beer, Mm. and uh, they're supposed to tell us to leave. And so what we made was a conscious decision way back in January, okay, let's stay out of Target, let's stay out of Walmart because they both have uh, licenses to sell alcohol. So this is them going into and finding old pictures and trying to create new relevancy to themselves and new controversy that, you know, is simply not true. And then also several weeks ago, um, maybe about a month ago, we we made a decision with our members not to even carry firearms into any local establishment, whether they sell or not, just to stick to what what we're doing, which is to try to raise awareness of our gun laws in Texas and get uh, open carry of handguns passed. So wait, 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 wait. Let, let, me, let, me, let me check, CJ, did, did I understand you made a decision that Open Carry Texas is now saying don't open carry into these stores, into any stores? Correct. And actually, that's a decision that we made jointly with Come and Take It Texas, Texas Carry, and Gun Rights Across America, the other three open carry advocates here in Texas. So Moms Demand Action, which, and I have said, this is primarily a public relations outfit uh, founded by you know, Shannon Watts. It's funded by Bloomberg, but they're very good at public relations. They're very good at getting these companies to issue a statement. It's not a legal deal. It's not banning guns at a Starbucks or Chipotle, but the PR value is huge to them. So what you're saying is they're taking your old photos and making it like a current controversy. Do you understand where I'm coming from, where a lot of us are are, are coming from, where we say, we look at this and say, this actually hurts us. Every time we get a company like uh, Target or Chipotle or Starbucks to issue the statement, we lose. We lose PR battle. Well, you know, it's amazing what $50 million in Bloomberg funds will buy you. You know, we're a small organization. We are truly grassroots. We, you know, our members maybe donate $2.23 or $5.56. Uh, you know, we ask for caliber donations. And, 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 and so that's what we're running off of. And you know, we'd be lucky if we clear a four digits every every month. So we don't have the kinds of resources that Moms Demand Action have uh, to counter this PR battle. I mean, we're slowly starting to win that. And, you know, when you've got an organization that controls the, the media and is able to get out a false narrative immediately and get everybody spun up about it, and, and they get spun up without even talking to us for facts, uh, then it's very difficult for an organization like ours that doesn't have any backing by any major organizations, any major donors, to, to get out there into the national press and try and correct okay. the record. Oh, I understand that, but I mean, they're not, you're not saying that these didn't happen. You're just saying they happened some time ago, but they still happen. I mean, your guys went in, they're carrying long guns, they're going into Target, they're going into Chipotle, they're going into these places, they're scaring the hell out of the customers. So it does well, happen. That- but, that, but that's not happening either, Tom. We, before we go into any restaurant in the past, we have always, and I need to emphasize that, always gotten permission prior to going in there. And we have never had a negative encounter in front of a restaurant where people were afraid or leaving or yelling. At, there, it just, the, the whole thing doesn't happen because we do get permission prior to going in there. We send in somebody unarmed first to make sure it's okay, even after the manager says it's okay. We talk to the customers that are inside and hand them a flyer and make sure that they're comfortable. And with with one instance, and that happened early last year when we had just gotten started, with one exception, we've never had uh, an issue with anybody getting getting scared. And even with that gentleman, we were able to talk to him and help him understand what it was we were doing. Well, help me understand. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Well, we're trying to get open carry of handguns passed, and we're trying to get... I get that, but how, how, how does carrying AKs and shotguns into stores get open carry of handguns passed? Well, uh, well, that's only part of our mission. The other part is to get people to feel comfortable. You know, right now, anybody that sees an AK or an AR-15, they, they freak out because they think, oh, my gosh, we're about to have another Columbine or another Sandy Hook. And we're trying, we're out there educating the public that that's not what these weapons are about. These are defensive firearms. 
and and they're no different than any other firearm. And we're trying to get rid of that stigma that's attached that it's attached to these firearms. Do you think you're winning? I think we are winning here in Texas because people here in Texas are getting it. The problem is you've got people in Indiana, which is where Moms Demand Action is based out of, and New York, which is where Bloomberg Spend Machine is based out of, that are creating these controversies. I think if gun owners would, would be objective and recognize the kind of media that's being spun against us, we complain all the time about the, the way that these guns are portrayed in the media. And then, you know, right now we're starting to attack – these same gun owners are attacking us for, for trying to counter that media narrative. And, well, and, here's what I would say. Here's what I would say is that it's not that you're trying to counter the media narrative. It's that you're, you're either unaware or unable to take advantage of the media. You're being used by the media. I think you, what you're doing is playing right into their hands, and you're giving them a win for them every time you show up. Well, no, but our local media is the exact opposite. You know, I don't, and and to kind of be a little bit blunt here. Uh, you know, what, what what a media thinks about what we're doing here in Texas based off of what a national media says it is just plain sour. I and mean, why isn't the national media picking up on the fact that we do open carry uh, trash pickup along highways, that we do open carry feeding of the homeless, that we do open carry uh, registration drives? And we, we do more than just walk into restaurants, and it, that's, that's not been picked up by the media. But, you well, know, yeah, yeah, all yeah, rights are yeah, dependent yeah. on what the media thinks about them. You can sit there and say that the media should, but if you carry long guns into stores, you're handing a loss to gun owners and a win to the gun banners because the media will pick up on it. You've got to know that going in, that this is a losing strategy. It's a losing tactic. It doesn't get you. And I don't care what the media is doing in Texas. And i got to tell you, frank, frankly, I don't think that uh, most people look at this. Where they, If they're not gun people, they look at this and they're going... That's just not working. CJ, look, I appreciate you calling. I'm going to open the, the phones up to other people and let them weigh in on this. And I appreciate you uh, you're joining us. I, I, I'm looking at this and going, really? We're complaining because the media's not covering us fairly? Have they ever? Did we expect them to? And if we walk into stores with our long guns on our backs, do you think that's going to make them cover us well? Really? One of Talker Magazine's 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. You're listening to Gun Talk, heard every week at this time on great radio stations across America. Stay tuned. Gun Talk is coming right back. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, still needing your help. Go to change.org and do a search for me, Tom Gresham, and you can sign up for the petition. I have to ask Target to just welcome lawful gun owners. You'll you understand when you get there. Go to change.org and search for me, Tom Gresham. You'll get my petition there. All right, let's go straight to the phones. Tom's on line four in Shreveport. Hello, Tom. Well, good evening, Tom, and thank you for taking my call. You bet. What do you think about, uh, we just had C.J. on uh, from Open Carry, Texas. Well, first let me say I'm not but 100 miles from from his area. And, oh, it's a can of worms. I personally want him to stay in Texas. We have too good a thing in Louisiana for him to come over here and, and muddy the water. And I appreciate the Second Amendment and his right to do so. But I'm afraid it's counterproductive. I just don't see the value in what he's doing. Those mm-hmm. that do not want to be educated will not learn. And I, I'm just afraid he's getting more negative publicity and hurting more than he's doing good. Oh, yeah. He's, he's the, uh, the media's darling. And, and not, not just CJ specifically, but the, the efforts that are going on here, the, the long, open carry long guns. Uh, and it doesn't really matter that they're going back and talking about things that are five months ago. That's That doesn't make it not valid. And yes, okay, it's a legitimate complaint to say, gee, they're not covering us fairly. Well, gee whiz. I mean, come on. It's the media. It's guns. And when you serve them up a softball like this, do you think they're not going to knock it out of the park every single time? And well, they're, not, they're not looking for fairness here. They're looking for the sensationalism, and you're giving it to them. That's exactly it, and they got to understand the media is anti-gun. 
Yeah, I think. Yeah, exactly. Look, Tom, I appreciate your call, sir. Uh, thanks for taking time out to, to give us a holler. Let's see here. I'll go to Ray on line two out of Beaufort, South Carolina. Hey, Ray. Hey, Tom. Beaufort's in North Carolina. I'm not going to split hairs with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, no, so now my, my question is about this whole open carry thing like that. Uh, in South Carolina, it's not legal. Um, uh, I spend a lot of time in Florida. It's legal under very specific set of circumstances. It's legal in Georgia, however, I, I don't have the heart to open carry. I'm, I'm just not going to do it because, you know, it's just too much, a lot of drama. You've seen the videos on YouTube and everything. Mm-hmm. I don't have time for that. Um, I have, I got 39 states with my concealed carry licenses, so I will uh, conceal carry uh, until the cows come home. So, um, my question is, you know, what if I invited you to go to Chipotle, right? You have a uh, concealed carry license, Tom, do you care to share that? Of course, I do. Of course, I do. I carry okay. all the time. Um, so, let, what if I said, "Hey, Tom, meet me uh, at a Chipotle in Florida, where they uh, where they don't want you to carry guns," or "Hey, Tom, let's go to the movies in Florida, uh, where most movie theaters uh, ban guns." Um, so, uh, that's two different questions. First of all, yeah. Chipotle does not ban guns. Okay. D- okay. Let's make sure we understand this very clearly. You have to understand what has been happening here. Let, okay. I'm, I'm going I'm to jump in here because the Moms Demand Action Group. They go to Chipotle, and they make a lot of noise, and they basically say, if you don't do this, it's like the old Jesse Jackson deal. If you don't make a contribution to us, guess what's going to happen? You're going to boycott. Uh, you know, it's, if, if you don't do this, we're going to make your life miserable. They're not asking them to ban guns. They say, just give us a PR deal. Come on, man, give us, a, give us a little love on the PR side. Just issue this statement. So they come out with a statement that says, we ask our customers to please leave their guns at home. That's all they say. It's not a ban, has no legal weight, nothing. It's not the same as putting a sign up. Because okay. in some states, if you put a sign up, then it's illegal to go in there with your gun. So if, they, if all they have done is, going back to your question, if all they have done is made a statement like that, I'm going to carry. Okay. Done deal. Now, let's say uh, I was using uh, Florida, for example, uh, specifically because they can put a sign up, but... Uh, it's just a sign. It doesn't mean anything, uh, legally speaking. What, what do you do in those cases? What, what, what do you recommend? I obey the law. If there's no law saying I can't go in there, then I do what I need to do. If there's a law that says I can't go in there, then I obey the law. Good enough. All right. Fair enough. Good. I appreciate your call, sir. Chad's in Medford, Oregon on three. Hello, Chad. Hey, Tom. I was calling uh, mainly about the uh, Texas open carry issue. I heard CJ t- speaking. Um, he mentioned a couple of things. Grassroots. In the last year and a half, grassroots around this country has virtually stopped the gun banners, the extra gun legislation that they wanted to pass after Sandy Hook. My family personally drove about four hours north of here to Salem to go to a gun rally. Um, Everyone was open carrying there, open carrying rifles, handguns. We're allowed to open carry handguns here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Uh, In Texas, they can't. That's the other thing that CJ is getting at. Instead of eating our own like the NRA did by siding with Mar, Bill Maher and Shannon Watts saying that it's it's disturbingly weird or whatever it was. And the big the big word I couldn't believe that the NRA used it was scary. It, they need to say let's look at the root problem here. These people would not be carrying their rifles around if they were allowed to carry their handguns. Uh, Texas of all places, my God, why do they? still not allow open carry of handguns, I would expect Texas to join the other five states. I'll tell you why. It's because Rick Perry doesn't want open carry. It's simple as that. The government, the governor keeps stopping it. And if, you know, and he, I know that Rick Perry likes to think of himself as a real pro-gun guy, but he stops open carry by himself. And that's what's going on in Texas. And so, but, but let me, let me circle back. Let me ask you this. Do you think that carrying these guns into stores, these long guns, do you think that that helps move public opinion toward open carry? Um, well, it's it, that's a very dicey issue. I open carry very frequently. I'll open in 
carry into some very liberal establishments. REI. That's not, that's not what I ask Jones. you. That's not what I ask you. Do you think the public reacts positively to the images of these guys carrying their AKs and their shotguns into stores? Do you think that's going to make them call their legislature and say, "Yes, we want open carry here"? Do you think that's the, they're going to be the end goal, the end run on this deal? That's that what we're going to get out of this? Are we going to win? Well, we, we obviously aren't getting the uh, the correct coverage um, of what's going on from the media. And why is that? Uh, yeah, like I say, it's it's going going. A lot of these guys that are doing the open carry Texas stuff, they'll be out along intersections, roads with signs and everything else. The one I think they went into a jack in the box, and some media outlets still today are reporting that employees ran into the freezer in fear when that never actually happened. I, I understand um, that. I understand, but you're 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 dodging my question. My question is, do they help us or do they hurt us? And I submit that they absolutely hurt us at every turn. If you want open carry of handguns in Texas, here's how you get it. I'm going to tell you how to get it. You get your butt down to the legislature. You spend two or three years finding out who are the power brokers there. You get involved. You spend some money. You make things happen. That's how you win. That's where it is. These guys are showing up at a football field, on the field, and they're wearing baseball cleats, and they're carrying a, a highlight stick or something. They don't even have a clue what the game is they're playing. That's why they're losing. They don't know what the game is. You get down to the legislature, and you make things happen. That's where it happens. It doesn't happen on the side of the street. It doesn't happen in these stores. And it certainly doesn't happen by playing into the hands of a media that we already know wants to destroy us. Why would you give them this much help? It makes no sense at all. If you think this is a great idea, call me. I'll give you the floor. I'd love to find somebody who says, yeah, this is great. These guys are doing good work. They're helping gun rights. 866-TALK-GUN. When your front door gets kicked in, the gun in the bedroom may be too far away. A wall safe from Console Vault keeps your gun secure and out of sight, but ready. Visit consolevault.com. Brownells proudly celebrates 75 years of history and heritage as the world's first choice for firearms, accessories, ammunition, and gunsmithing tools. So whether you're a gunsmith in need of parts and supplies, a new shooter looking for the perfect holster, or a skilled competitor seeking the latest gear, Brownells has what you need. And best of all, every purchase comes with the industry's only forever satisfaction guarantee. Visit us at brownells.com. Hi, I'm Tom Gresham. For more than 40 years, I've been watching an environmental disaster in my backyard, and it actually impacts all sportsmen in America. I'm talking about the massive loss of land on the Louisiana coastline. The U.S. Geological Survey said the swamps and marshes of coastal Louisiana are among the nation's most fragile and valuable wetlands. That land is disappearing. The Mississippi River Delta hosts as many as 10 million ducks and geese every winter. These are birds which migrate northward through the states, all the way to Canada. The wetlands of the Delta support some of America's best fresh and saltwater fishing. And here's the deal. The wetlands of the Mississippi River Delta are disappearing at a rate of one football field every hour. One football field every hour. Gone. We can reconnect the river with its wetlands and restore the Delta, but we need your help. Please visit vanishingparadise.org. That's vanishingparadise.org. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. You're headed somewhere your gun can't go. Leave it in a truck? Unsecured? Nope. Get a vehicle vault. Fits most trucks and SUVs. Installs in 10 minutes. Plate steel, fast access. Visit C-O-N-S-O-L-E vault.com. All 
A famous radio consultant once said he'd be off the air in a year. Whoops! Defending your Second Amendment rights since 1995 on over 150 radio stations nationwide. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, still got the uh, the petition running. In fact, it just started last night. We've got a few hundred in there. We got to get a few thousand involved. Asking your help, not only to go there and sign up, but actually call your friends, send emails to everybody on your list. Let's get everybody over to this petition that we started to ask Target, the department store company, to welcome lawful gun owners. Simply let the laws remain as they are, whatever the law is in that state, and not issue a statement to get the moms demand action off their backs. Somebody needs to step up and have the guts to tell them, no, you guys get out of here. I understand the implied threat that the Moms Demand Action puts out there, but at the same time, somebody's got to come up with some guts, and maybe if we give them some backing and we have tens of thousands of people who say, hey guys, we're lawful gun owners. We go to Target. We're not a problem. We would like to continue to go to Target. We would like for you to not issue this kind of statement. So anyway, that's that's what I've done here. If you go to change.org, you do a search. Several people have said, well, they had a little trouble finding it. You just go to change.org, you do a search for my name, Tom Gresham, and you scroll down, it's like the fifth or sixth petition that's listed there, and it says, welcome lawful gun owners. That's the name of the petition. And you click on that and you can sign it. It's a pr- pretty easy deal. All right, if you want to call us here, it's 866-TALK-GUN. If you'd like to send me an email, I'm getting a lot of emails right now, uh, tom at guntalk. Dot com. Let's go to line four. Jerry's with us out of Rudy, Arkansas. Hey, Jerry. How do you, sir? Uh, that open carry Texas bunch, you're welcome to stop this nonsense at any time. Because, okay, if we look at this from a civil rights perspective, this does not, the Woolworths lunch counter thing does not work for us. We're not sympathetic characters in the media anyway. You know, I'm all for the Booker T. Washington thing of, you know, just slowly working through the legislatures like he mentioned previously. Well, uh, that's how it works. And I know people say, well, I don't want to get involved with politics. Well, okay, then you will be told what laws you live under. If you refuse to get involved in politics, people who do will come out and tell you what you have to live with. If you want to change something, you have to get to... Your state representative and your state senator should know you by first name. If he or she does it, you're not doing your job. But also from a practical perspective, these guys are one nine one one call away from a complete disaster for us all. You know, if these anti gun folks are they they feel welcome to, you know, dance in the blood of unaffiliated folks. You know, how hard are they going to dance in the blood of gun owners when this, you know, goes really, really bad? Well, I got an email from a police officer friend of mine. He said, look, he says, basically what you said, officers get a call from a dispatcher, a guy with a gun, and they roll out there. All you need is like uh, one of those, we call it an accident chain when we look at accidents, where if the dispatcher gets worked up over it, and her voice or his voice is agitated on the radio, that makes a difference. When they roll in, you get a couple of rookie cops and they're scared to death, that makes a difference. And one of the things that somebody once told me about police and shooting is gunfire is like yawns. It's contagious. If one of them fires a shot, they're all gonna start shooting. Just the way it is. And you're right. You're exactly right. They are a 911 call away from an absolute freaking disaster. I just, I just look at it and think, how can anybody think that this is winning when every, I mean, if you do a search, do a Google search for these guys and look at all the stories, not just local stories, all over the country. This is a national loss for gun rights. It's a national win for the gun banners. And they hand it to them on a silver platter. And then they say, well, but yeah, we're getting pretty good coverage down here. I don't know, short-sighted, blinders, uh, clueless, naive, fill in the blank, whatever you think it is. I just, I'm not getting it, and I don't understand how you can look at this and think that this is anything but a loss. The question is, let me ask you this question. How do we get these guys to knock it off? 866-TALK-GUN, 866-TALK-GUN.
Gun Talk stands for safety, personal responsibility, and common courtesy. To be a part of the show, call 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Gun Talk will be right back. Hey, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to have the uh, author of a brand new book. He was co-author of American Sniper with Chris Kyle. He's got a new uh, action adventure uh, novel, Target America. I'm talking with him. Uh, first, though, we're taking your calls right here at 866-TALK-GUN, 866-825-5486. Line one, Robert's with us. Hey, Robert. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Thank you for your um, show. I, I love it. I, I always look forward to listening to it. Thank you. I wanted to bring up a, an individual who I just read an article by. Her name is... And, and it blew me away with her name. I had to do some research to check on her because I just thought this name was a little weird. But anyway, uh, Publius Hulda, and it's spelled P-U-B-L-I-U-S-H-U-L-D-A-H. And she's a constitutional scholar, uh, philosopher, etc. And she writes some pretty interesting stuff about our Second Amendment and the Constitution. And I hmm. challenge everybody out there and anybody out there to look her up and read what she has to say. It's Publius Hulda. It's P U B L I U S H U L D A H. Yes. And yeah, it, I'm looking I mean, at like a blog said, there. I saw, yeah, there's a blog. I, I'm actually on her. I went on one of her blogs right now and I'm looking at it. Uh, Mark Levin supports her. Uh, she, she, she's read Ayn Rand. She loves Ayn Rand. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, Atlas Shrugged and all that. So she's uh, she's very very intelligent. What she writes, she's also really heavy into the Federalist Papers, uh, Hamilton, ah. uh, Madison, and Jay. So That's she's right. really uh, just well read about the Constitution. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I you just have, really you challenge people the, out there. Okay. All right. And you had a thought on the open carry guys. Oh yeah, I, I think it's ridiculous. I I I prefer concealed just because I don't want to offend anybody and I don't want to scare anybody. And if, if I was in a store and I was carrying concealed. And somebody walked in with an AR or anything, I might tend to have my hand uh, on my weapon ready because it's kind of, that's is what happens often is people come walking in. And I, I know you just talked about that, too. I mean, it almost sets off an alarm, and it's a little bit scary. Uh, and it might cause well, violence, just, you know, whatever. I might, you might pull your weapon just to stop them before anything I, happens. I, I might not pull my firearm, but I would, if I saw people walking in the front door carrying long guns, I would gather my wife and my family, would be going out the back with my hand on my gun when it happened, because I don't know who they are, I have no idea what their intentions are, and I'm not going to wait around to find out. Exactly. I agree 100% with that. I mean, it's uh, concealed is so much better and so much uh, easier and so much uh, I like less the fact that you know, it, it, It's actually polite, more polite. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just, the only problem with conceal for me is it's almost like you have to register to, to be to carry concealed because you got to let them know what you have too. Yeah, I, of, I understand, but at the same time, there yeah. are some real tactical advantages. I I don't know anybody who is a serious warrior type. I'm talking about you know real Delta Navy type guys, police officers. I don't know any of them who carry openly. Exactly. I'm a veteran too. I'm a Vietnam veteran, so. Uh, I, I, I understand that. Unless you're in a war zone, you you, you carry concealed. Yeah, well, uh, that's it. You, you basically you, you carry concealed, and you're always ready. But you know you don't you're not causing you're not calling attention to yourself. This 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 is a PR move gone terribly wrong. Is what it is. Just terribly terribly wrong. Uh, so anyway, let me. Get, I'm gonna get Norman in here on line three. Norman, I got one minute. So j- dive into it, please. I prefer to shop where there's a possibility that there are some legal gun carriers to act as a defensive force in case of trouble. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't like to go to places that are marked uh, gun-free because we know now that uh, the help is minutes away instead of seconds away. Absolutely. These uh, guys that come that. in and massacre wouldn't do it if they knew that there was anybody there with a, with a gun. Well, they, with one notable exception, the Gabby Gifford shooting, pretty much all of the mass shootings have taken place in gun-free zones. And that's not a coincidence. They like to go to places where they say, I can, I want to kill as many people as I can before the police get there because they figure that nobody there is going to be able to stop them. So the question is, do you want to stop them right now or do you want to wait three minutes and let them shoot somebody every 10 seconds for the three minutes while we're waiting for the police to be there? So yeah, it's, it's pretty simple math to me. When we come back... A brand new novel, Target America. No black helicopters here. Just the facts about gun rights and gun ownership. This is Gun Talk. 